Hello and welcome back. So far we have understood the dimensionality reduction and uh, principal component analysis theoretically. Let us try to apply it on a data set and see how it works. The first point I wanted to make is you should never apply dimensional, dimensional reduction blindly and try to build a model. First you take the original data set and then build a model if it is possible, right? If you have 1 million columns may not be possible. Maybe in 10,000 columns you have. Maybe possible to build a model. You build a model and see how it's working on a supervised setup. If the model is working good. Keep that model aside and then try to apply dimensionality reduction and then build a model using the reduced dimensionality data set and see how it is working. If it is working equally or similar, like you know, maybe the original model is giving 90% and this is giving 89.8%, okay, you can take it. You can reduce the dimensionality and build models. That's how you need to do. So applying blindly dimensionality reduction and then trying to build models is not a good approach because dimensionality reduction will make the data, you know, some loss in data, right? The essence in data. So it is like compressing an image to JPG, right? It, it loses some essence, right? The quality of the image reduces. Like that, your data's quality will reduce. When quality of the input data reduces, right? The predictive power reduces. Our main goal in AI is to make predictions, better predictions. So using these kinds of techniques, if you lose pred the predictive power, right? The meaning, it's a, it's a meaningless thing, right? So blindly, you should not apply dimensionality reduction. The second point is, apart from, you know, improving performance in model building, you know, and prediction, uh, we'll use dimensionality reduction to visualize also. If there is a 100 dimensional data set, you can reduce it to two dimensions and, you know, plot it in a two dimensional plot. Generally, you know, it will lose lots of information when you are reducing 100 dimensional data to two dimensions and it, depend, it depends on the algorithm you are using also. If you use PCA, it extracts only the, you know, the variance there, right? The other properties it is not going to ex extract, right? So you can use that also. TSNE is one algorithm which is used and which is based out of Gaussian uh, probability. It tries to take, you know, the original data and uh, tries to calculate the Gaussian similarities between records and reduces the dimensionality to keep the Gaussian similarity. That is TSNE. So generally people use TSNE algorithm to do visualization of the data. Okay. So that's one way you can use the dimensionality reduction. So I have taken the you know, modules needed, pandas, whatever. And I have taken digit recognizer data, hand digit uh, handwritten digit recognition, MINST data set, MNIST data set. And we use the same data set in our uh, uh, binary class and multi class classifications. So the data set is like this for each record, there is a label whether the you know picture belongs to one or four or zero or whatever. And there are 784 pixels for each picture. Somebody wrote a number and you know the, the guy who have prepared the data set took a picture, converted it into pixels and prepared the, this data set and labeled it. In PCA, we are not going to consider the Y value, Y variable. That's where we call it as an unsupervised learning algorithm. So we no need to be worried about Y, but you know, to do a train test split, we can use Y. Now, even like this is, like we'll build a model in the bottom. That's where I you know did a train test split. So I have taken a particular record and try to convert into 28 by 28 matrix and try to print that matrix. If you look at this matrix, right, you can see that there is a pattern 5. Rest all are zeros and only, you know, where it looks like 5, right? So there are numbers. So when you, when somebody writes some number or paints some number, right, only the areas which paint has got, you'll have high pixels and rest of the area are, you know, zero pixels or low pixels. So it can be white or black, right? It depends. So, you know, if you, this is one record, right? This is one record, one row. I converted it to 28 by 28 and try to project it like this. Similarly, right? Any record you take, only this area will have pixels which are high <clears throat> and the rest of the area will have generally zeros, right? So that means if you take any number of records, right? Only certain columns are having correlation. So 
when you apply PCA on this particular data, right? If it extract that correlation, that may be useful in predicting, right? When when the record is predicted as five, because this 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 area has got you know the high density pixels, and the flag flag is five. That's where it may be able to predict, right? So what I what my point is, this data set is eligible to apply PCA. What is the assumption of PCA? If the strongly correlated features have got the strong predictive power, then you can apply PCA, right? Then only PCA algorithm will work because PCA assumes that data has got the strongly correlated features have got you know, strong predictive power. So what I am trying to do is I am trying to reduce this uh, 784 pixel data set into 400 pixels using PCA and then build a model and see whether I am getting the same accuracy or not. That's what I'm, my goal is. Generally, the unsupervised learning algorithms are used as support for supervised learning algorithms. In our uh, multi-class classification using uh, the Minster data set, we used, you know, uh, SGD classifier, which is nothing but logistic regression. So that's the supervised learning algorithm to make predictions. So here, what I'm going to do is before applying PCA, so before applying uh, the logistic regression algorithm and make a prediction or build a model and make a prediction. I am going to reduce the dimensionality and try to build a model because uh, with uh, with 400 columns, you will get higher performance of training and you know even prediction also. Right? If you pass a batch of records, prediction also it's going to be give high high performance. So the point is that this data set is eligible to apply PCA because some area or some columns have got the most essence. So if you try to extract the essence of the data, maybe that essence gets captured and you know that data set is transformed data set is also useful. So let us jump in and try to see how to apply PCA. In scikit-learn we have decomposition uh, a module in that we have PCA, the principal component analysis. I created an object PCA1 and then I said fit transform of uh, X train. We don't care about Y here, it's an unsupervised learning algorithm. When you say X train, what happens? We have seen that math, right? It mean centralizes the data. The PCA algorithm will, the scikit learns PCA algorithm will take care of it. It mean centralizes the data and calculates the X transpose X, then passes it to eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and then decomposes the you know, matrix and finds out the principal components, which are of length A784, because the data set's length is, the number of columns are 784. You are trying to find a correlation matrix between columns and columns. So you are going to get a 784 by 784 covariance matrix. And then you are going to pass it to the eigen value decomposition, which will give you 784 by 784, you know, matrix, which is a principal component. You take how many principal components you want and then multiply your matrix. The original 30,000 by 784 matrix and you get 30,000 by 400. If you take 400 principal components. That's how it works. Okay, so I passed the you know data, and I have got 30, 000, 33,600 by 784 because I did not specify when I am when I declared the method. I did not specify how many columns I want to extract or how many principal components I want to use. I did not specify that. So you can specify it in two ways. There is a, a you know variable called as n components. When you say n components is equal to 20, it extracts 20 columns only. See this here, PCA2, I created another object PCA with n components 20 and I fit transformed my original data, I've got 20 columns only. That means I have taken 20 principal, the eigenvectors and multiplied the matrix, the original 30,000 by 784 pixel, 784 column data set, I've got 33,600 by 20 here. Okay, so how many principal components you take and multiply with original matrix, that many, you know, columns you get. So this is transformed data, only 20 columns have that. When you extract 20 columns, right, it does, is that enough? How many components you should use? Right, whether I should say 20 or 30 or, you know, 500 or 784, we should know. There are two approaches to do, you know, select the components, how many components you can select, okay? We'll see that in a moment, but before that, right? N components takes 
a number between 0 and 1 and a, a integer also okay integer can be 784 up to up till 784 the number the real number if you are passing right it, it can be between 0 and 1 if you say 95 or 95.95 right it is going to extract the number of columns which will extract the 95 percent of explained variance ratio what is explained variance ratio you are passing a covariance matrix to the eigenvalue decomposition right so that is going to extract the explained variance ratio which is nothing but the covariance the first principal component is extracting 0 0.9 9 percent covariance i actually tried to take I applied this PCA. I tried to print explained variance ratio values, which is uh, you know generally in PCA it is a diagonal matrix. If you take only diagonal values, right, it's going to be a one-dimensional matrix. And the principal components are 784 by 784. In PCA, it actually gives you a transpose of the principal component. So we need to apply transpose. So 784 by 784. 784 columns are there. So you get 784 principal components and 784 eigenvalues which are nothing but the explained variance ratios. The explained variance ratios are going to be in descending order. The first principal component extracted 0 0.097. That means 0.97 percent or you know 9 percent sorry 9 percent 9.7 percent of the data's essence it extracted. Second one 7.1 percent. Third one 6.1 percent fourth one 5.3 percent like that each principal component extracted a little bit little bit of essence by the time you reach uh, the 600 or 650 right you will get 0 0 0.000, 0 0.000 essence extracted okay so here if you want to see if you you know if you extract three principal components how much essence you, you get to know that what you can do is sum up these three Explained variance ratios. So how much it is that? Is that 0 0.9 plus 0 0.7 is 0 0.16 plus 0 0.6 is 0 0.22. Around you no know, 22% or 23% of the essence will be extracted. If you take three principal components, or if you say n components is equal to 3, the PCA will extract 22% of the essence. Instead of that, you can do you can actually say like I want 95% of the essence. Then what it will do is it will try to cumulatively sum all these you know explained variance ratios till it reaches 0 0.95 and take that many principal components and uh, extract it so 0 0.95 153 columns you have to take 153 principal components you have to take and multiply your original data then you will get 0 0.95 percent of the or 95 percent of the explained variance ratio in your original data if you try to extract 99.99 percent explained variance ratio right that must that, that must actually capture most of the information in the 784 columns so we'll try to do that in a moment okay so the bottom line is that you can either pass an integer to n components which will extract that many columns or you can specify the essence how much you want to extract 95 percent essence 99% essence, what is the essence here? The PCA extracting covariance or multicollinearity. Okay. So 95%, 99% you can specify. When you say 95%, right, it actually cumulatively sums all and then tries to extract. So let us see the approaches. How much number you should give? The n components number integer, how much you should give or how to specify that uh, percentage. Okay. So to do that there are two approaches one is cumulatively sum what is cumulative sum if you have one two three four in a matrix if you say cumulative sum it's going to be one plus one is the first value second one is going to be one plus two third one is going to be one plus two plus three fourth one is going to be one plus two plus three plus four like that it is so cumulative sum of your explained variance ratio means if you see the explained variance ratios here 0 0.97 0 0.71 0 0.61 like that right when i did the cumulative sum 0.97 this is 0.97 plus 0 0.7 0 0.97 plus 0 0.7 plus 0 0.6 0 0.97 plus 0 0.6 plus 0 0.7 plus 0 0.6 plus 0 0.5 like that it's going to do cumulative sum when you look at this cumulative sum right it is raising by by the time you come here right this is actually 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and by the time you reach uh, 
థర్టీ ప్రిన్సిపల్ కాన్ఫరెన్స్ రైట్ ఎయిటీ త్రీ పర్సెంట్ వన్ టూ త్రీ ఫోర్ ఫైవ్ సిక్స్ సెవెన్ సెవెంటీ ప్రిన్సిపల్ కాన్ఫరెన్స్ ఇట్ ఇస్ ఎయిటీ త్రీ పర్సెంట్ ఎయిటీ ప్రిన్సిపల్ కాన్ఫరెన్స్ ఇట్ ఇస్ ఎయిటీ సిక్స్ పర్సెంట్ రైట్ సో బై లుకింగ్ ఎట్ క్యూములేటివ్ సమ్ యూ కెన్ డిసైడ్ హౌ మచ్ హౌ మెనీ ప్రిన్సిపల్ కాన్ఫరెన్స్ యూ కెన్ ఎక్స్ట్రాక్ట్ ఆర్ ఇన్ అన్ అదర్ వే యూ కెన్ యాక్చువల్లీ డూ ఎ లర్నింగ్ కర్ ఓకే లైక్ దిస్ యూ టేక్ నంబర్ ఆఫ్ డైమెన్షన్స్ అండ్ ఎక్స్ యాక్సిస్ అండ్ క్యూములేటివ్ uh saman y axis and try to plot a graph you know see this by around 400 you have got 100 percent essence from the data explained variance ratio from data if you take 400 principal components and uh, you know say n is equal to n components is good 400 you will get most of the essence that may be the you know center of the image like you know the these columns you know center columns essence you would you would get it okay so here if you see this right if you say arg max of uh, cumulative sum greater than or equal to 0.99 what is arg max wherever they you know the um, values high at that cumulative sum you no know, be below that cumulative sum the index will be returned so that index is nothing but the number of principal components that is one way and the other way is looking at the uh, learning curve okay learning curve and decide so for 400 i said right so i have taken n components is equal to 400 extracted so this uh, this data set right when i said fit transform it has got uh, 33600 by 400 these 400 columns should have most of the essence from your data set okay so let us see whether it ex- extracted the most of the essence or not there are two ways one is use this data set use this uh, input variables the converted z1 till z400 in a supervisor setup and see how it is working the second is inverse transform the data what we did we t- we took 784 columns and reduced them into 400 columns try to reproduce 784 columns using these 400 columns got it original data we are trying to reproduce will we be able to generate the original data no there will be loss but we'll try to generate as much as we can by reverse engineering the data there is a way to do that in uh, scikit-learn inverse transform is the method on the pca the principal component analysis object you created and you did fit transform if you say inverse transform and pass the 400 column data set you will get 784 columns you can create 784 columns back but it is not going to be the original 784 columns it is just generated you know reverse engineering so in one way you can do you can actually look at the difference between the original 784 columns and the inverse transformed or you know 784 columns when you look at the difference right if it, the, the difference is less the transformation is good right you took a number you did some math and you transformed it to some other number and you reverse engineered and try to generate the same number if the difference is less then transformation is good If the difference is more the transform is transformation is bad right so that's how it is in for inverse inverse transformation you can do right reconstruction we call it as and looking at the difference between the original data and the reconstructed data is called as reconstruction error if the reconstruction error is less you say your pca principal component algorithm is working good or transforming the data well okay that is one way so here i tried to reconstruct a 784 pixels using the 400 columns and then took one sample image and tried to generate if the, if you look at the original image it is neat if you look at the second one right it, it has got some noise because it reconstructed but it looks like the number right it is it is having the shape so let us try to use the you know same data set and try to you know same 400 column data set and try to build a model so on a 784 column original data set we have got 92% accuracy if you look at this no I, we actually saw this in a multi class classification if you look at that the same data set we used so we have got on train set 92% accuracy we have got f1 score we have got and i am going to use this transformed data right there is the transformed data yeah so the transformed data here and then and right, i am going to build a model right using uh, y train and x train and i am going to build a model and make predictions and look at the 
accuracy the fun score i have got is 92% so the model is the pca is working good on this particular data pca worked good there is another algorithm called as incremental pca which actually you know does the principal component analysis in a incremental fashion so in the incremental pca the objective should say partial fit in an iterative model you can take batch by batch if you have 1 million records you can take 100 records at a time do partial fit and then do a transform in a single shot which actually converts your data into the n components you asked so general normal pca on a huge data set may not work because of the eigen value eigen vector decomposition and all that math but incremental pca works on a huge data set also because it is working in a cumulative fashion the batch by batch fashion so that's about the pca programmatically thank you